Hello, everyone. We are live. Hi, it's been a week ago that we met, and right now we are live. I want to welcome everyone joining us on this show. You are welcome to Making a Difference with Sandra Oko. I believe there is a giant in you waiting to be discovered. And next, in your, within you, that great giant in you right now, and you need to become that change agent you are all called to be, that God has made us to be. It is time to ignite you. It is time to discover your greater potential and to see the possibility that exists within you to help you maximize your potential through this unique platform for mentoring, training, teaching, and coaching people on how they can become better versions of themselves after being through trials, trauma in their finances, life, business, ministry, career, relationship, marriage, and a lot more. At Making a Difference with Sandra Uko Life Show, we leverage the power of story selling, coaching and mentorship, and value creation to help bring about the best in people in order to make a world of difference. This show requires bringing us to assessing our value system and the process of recreation of a good value system to shape our thoughts through the guests that shares their story on this platform. This process opens our eyes to new strategies, information, and valuable perspective that would help us define and refine our value system with more clarity on our why. We need to know our why. Why am I here? What have I been called to do? What have I been, what have I been called to solve? And we are a people, yeah, we need to live with a mindset, begin with the end in mind, and also to stand out in all that we do. And right now, today, we have a guest with us. Guess who? She is no other person than Steph Kawasaki. I'm so excited to bring her on. I've been bringing her up online. But before I do that, I'm glad to read a resume and Steph Kawasaki was born and raised on the island of Oahu, Hawaii, USA. She brings creative vision and fresh ideas that promote an environment of engaged human. Over a 30 year civil service career with the federal government, Department of Defense, and many years of leading projects and facilitating teams, she experienced repetitive roadblocks to progress. Wow. <laughs> you know, <laughs> to progress and realize it stemmed from resistant people. So she found ways to help individuals know who they are, their value, and why it matters to the team. The result helped discover their distinct value and how they benefited the team, ultimately elevating team coercion. She is a Maxwell Leadership Certified Trainer and the only certified advisor in, in Hawaii is skilled in delivering the fascination advantage system, a multidimensional communication tool based on branding and innovation. She enjoys and values creating memories with her husband, extended family of other children, their spouses, grandchildren, and their golden retrievers, Mozart and Isabel. Our vision, our vision is that when you think of building a culture of human engagement, you think of us. We advocate and support communities of people who are engaged, inspire to relate, create, innovate, and our mission is to inspire and support a culture of engagement in our homes, communities, workplaces, one time at a time, one person at a time. And our why is we believe humans are born for a purpose that involves relation, creation, innovation. We notice that nothing, up, nothing happening much in our families, communities, workplace. That is why we are here to help. And that's why she... I am bringing her on board to share our awesome story, and you'll be so thrilled. The next person you see online is Stephanie Kawasaki. Great to have you, madam. Hey, awesome. <laughs> I'm good. I'm glad to have you on this show today. You're Thank welcome. Thank you. Thank I you for me. Your, yes, I just read your bow. Perhaps you have something you want to share with us. The audience would like to hear from the author's mouth. As much as I've read your bow, I also want you to say the things you're doing right now where you're making a difference. I know you're running a five weeks mastermind. You might want to touch on that too. That's a great one. So you speak. 
the floor is all yours. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Sandra, for inviting me on your show. I'm so excited to be on your show. After reading all that, bi the bio, I'm thinking, wow. wow. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, is that all me? No, just kidding. I love it. Thank you so much again. You, What you're doing is an awesome, awesome, you're on an awesome journey as well. And I am so, so thankful to the Lord that we've crossed paths in our journey. And, Thank you. Uh, yeah. So yes, five-week mastermind. We are both John Maxwell certified team members and during one of our classes or one of our training live trainings on zoom we met each other right uh, yeah. and as we we were learning we uh you actually approached me to uh go ahead and start doing this mastermind and i love the idea that we can learn from each other and yeah. we can support each other i love it i just love it. it it's going really well this is our second week we just finished our second week and uh again five weeks we have a bunch of people that signed up and it's free and i i, I tell you the the amount of gems that are coming out of these discussions it's just amazing amazing yes. how you can bring strangers that don't even know each other together and study, you know, principles and, and value-based leadership, growth, uh, everything that a human basic needs, you know, um, characteristics that we should be improving on, uh, and how everyone learns from each other. I just love it. I love the idea. Thank you again. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate your coming on this, on this show. And I know there's a lot we can learn from you. And that's why I think I had a bit of your story sometime. And I said, oh, you want, you'll be a good uh, fit for this show. That's why I know I had to call you to come online. We want to glean from you. We want to learn from you. Life is all about, you know, collaborating, synergizing together to bring out the best in others. Sometimes you are stronger and the other person is weak. Sometimes the weaker one becomes the stronger one and you are the one that is weak. Both of you are there to keep warming each other and helping each other and inspiring and motivating each other. And like rightly, that's what we're doing to one another, to each other. And today I want to find out from you because on this show, we talk about career, we talk about business, we talk about relationship and a lot more as the spirit of God leads us. And that's why I said, um, we, as much as we have what we want to say planned out, we also give room. So, you know, all the things our inner spirit wants to, you know, share. Because you never know what will resonate. You never know what testimony or what you will say that the people are waiting to hear. I want to find out from you, how did you go through life? Going, starting, I just want to hear you. Because sometimes you get some people who say, oh, I was abused. I did this. I went mm. through this. I was depressed. I almost committed suicide. But I want mm. people to learn that the road to success was never promised to be smooth. And so mm -hmm. what was your journey? Tell me your story. Yeah. Oh, good. Yes, thank you. Okay, so I I was born and raised in Hawaii. Uh, and being, I, I think, um, so how many of you have been uh, <laughs> to Hawaii? Have you been to Hawaii, Sandra? No, no. Not no I probably will visit because of you. <laughs> yes, of course, of course. Yes, you must make that on your list to a place yeah. to visit. Bring your family over, and I would definitely show you the islands. And anyway, um, born and raised in Hawaii, I think I'm third generation. My great great grandparent great grandparents came over from China, and um, and we've had, we have a, a whole mixture of ethnicities in our line. Uh, anyway, so. Um, born and raised in Hawaii, Asian of descent. Uh, we have a multi pot of different cultures that are here in the islands. And the one thing that I realized as I was growing up, there's certain, there's an Asian type of culture that has, that I was raised in. And um, basically my parents were um, both work. My, oh no, my mom stayed home for a while. Then she went to work. My dad worked for Qantas Airlines, uh, and we, I, you know, I was basically a 
very shy, introverted child. Um, my parents were very social. We, you know, they would invite a lot of friends over on the weekends and then a lot of kids would come over. Um, but because they spoke up for me, I didn't even have to. So I was always the shy, reserved one that, you know, wasn't comfortable with crowds. Uh, anyway, growing up, uh, you know, learning how to get along with different kind of people. I think that's just what we do here because we were on a small, you know, uh, islands in the, in the middle of the Pacific. You just learn to get along with different kinds of cultures and eat different kind of food. Um, okay, so then going to school, everything was fine. Um, but I realized as I was growing up, I didn't really voice my opinion a lot of times because it was just something I didn't want to be bothered with as far as um, being confrontational. Um, I, I don't know if you've heard of a term, uh, don't rock the boat. <laughs> Have you heard of that term? Don't rock I'm the boat. Yeah. Well, I think that for me, it was more of... Um, you know, if anybody had an opinion that was not my, that what I didn't agree, uh, I would be the one that wouldn't say anything. I would just like, oh, okay, you know, I'm I'm okay with that. I mean, you have your you're entitled to your opinion, and and I'm not gonna, you know, disagree in any way what your opinion is about, and I'm not gonna try to change your mind or anything. But I was the one that always was non-confrontational would agree with everyone's opinion um and and i i realized as i got older into my adulthood uh it sometimes it got to a point where i was found myself like a doormat um being not true to myself and not speaking up for myself and and that kind of that kind of, uh, I think, even to this day, I still think I still struggle with it because I'm so accommodating and I'm very um, careful not to hurt other people's feelings and or rock the boat. Or, but I realize as I'm getting older that that's not always the right thing to do, to just be accommodating and to just take anything and everything that comes toward, you know, at you, uh, at some point, And I, and I realized as on my journey, no, you know, getting to know the Lord, accepting Jesus in my heart. Um, I realized that, you know, God had created me for purpose on purpose and, and it's not to be a doormat and it's not, not to just take everything in and just be okay with it. Yeah. You know? At some point, we, we need to stand for something. I need to stand for something. And I need to be more intentional on what I stand for and what's important and not just take it all the time. You know, so this has been a journey for me. And, you know, joining Toastmasters, I joined Toastmasters as I was, I worked for the government for 30 years. And during that time, I, I know it reflected in my career. Um, as I got into positions of influence as a leader, uh, it was very difficult to tell, not tell people what to do, but, you know, like to lead people in a way that th they would be cooperative, cooperative, collaborative, um, be nice to each other. You know, I've ex experienced many teams that were not, people didn't play nice together as adults <laughs> you know it was it was really interesting that a lot of times i would be in in team meetings and people were literally like going throwing tantrums in in uh conference rooms <laughs> but what i've learned is that i don't know where was i going with this oh what i've learned is that to be a leader um yeah. It takes, it takes, you You have to be intentional on learning, sure. right? And growing yeah. and, and learning. I think I, what I've had to learn is a lot about myself. Um, the things that I wanted to help 
influence others, bring, um, and you know, I, I noticed a lot too, as I was saying, um, with teams, I knew a lot of people that were insecure or not valuing who they were, were the ones that were most irritable <laughs> or, you very know, confrontational or very, were, yeah, very irritable, very antagonistic. They don't yeah. want to see you make progress or impact. Yes, yeah. yeah. And it was because maybe they were, you know, of course, maybe they had a bad day. They woke up on the wrong side of the bed, whatever. But I think deep down inside, if they were not happy with themselves or, you know, they, they were battling um, insecurity again, you know, it, it reflected on the outside. And, yeah. and they would, like, end up putting other people down. Um but I've, over the years, I've had to learn that, and um, and I really had to step out of my my boat of comfort, <laughs> and and like literally step on the water and just like have faith that God was going to teach me how to deal with this um, insecurities, my my own insecurities as well. <laughs> so other than that, I've been pretty much uh, learning this whole, I say, if you don't, if you're not learning on a daily basis, and even though I'm retired, I started my own coaching business, uh, you know, I'm still learning. And it's just, it's just wonderful to be able to wake up every morning and learn something new, collaborate and meet other people. Even though I'm shy and high, highly introverted, um, I do it because I know it's good for me. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. I, I want to encourage you. That's a great one. You've been through a lot of phases and uh, growing as an introverted child. And still, you're still able to come to the front of the camera to coach and to teach. I know. It's yeah. a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. And I, I think over time, I noticed that people who try to pull you down oftentimes are people who are hurting. Some people have a mindset they've been hurt in time past. And, you know, it is said that hurting people hurt people. Mm. You understand? And we ought not to be such people. Yes, yeah. sometimes you go through some circumstances and situations in life, but that's not the end to life. Right. Sometimes you go through the situations to prepare and train us to be able to stand in for others. Not because we've been through wrong and rough terrain. We want others to go through the terrains. You find that, that uh, a lot of people who don't know God wants to do the same thing. They want you to fall into the same pitfalls. And one of the reasons why we do this show is to learn from people so that we do not need to reinvent the wheel. We do not need to fall. It's just like I knowing that you know, Stephanie has been ahead of me. She's been through that route before. She's failed in several things, and now she's a success in a particular area. And I want to do a business she's done in time past. I would have to run to Stephanie and say, Stephanie, can you guide me? So I do not have to repeat all the mistakes you made when you did yours. Mm -hmm. That's what we are meant to. We are meant to collaborate, synergize, learn from each other. Get someone who will shadow in with you, hold your hands, and walk the paths of success together. So we are not all born perfect. We are learning. We are on a journey to becoming the best version and a change agent in our endeavors, what we have chosen or what God has called us to be. And if you find that you have a weakness somewhere, you need to extend and reach out. And you find that those people who we are antagonizing, who we are irritable, check their history, check where they're coming from. Either they were in a home where both parents are bitter, where they were not brought up well, where negative things were said around them. It is said, what makes a man is dependent on the three things they undergo in life. So you're exposed or the resources you are exposed to. Resources in the sense that the TV, the news, the magazine, the books you read. What resources are you exposed to? If you're exposed, it is said with the computer, garbage in, garbage out. So what you put in based on the things you watch on the screen, on the TV, on the internet, the books you read are the resources. So if you get wrong resources digesting inside your system, you would always show those negative outputs because over time you have fed yourself with these negative resources. You can never hide. It's only a matter of time. It will come to limelight. 
what are the people who are the people that you hang around can you name five people you stay around who hang around you hang around with once you are able to tell the people you stay around with if there are people who draw you down who are never people you can aspire to wanting to become you are better run away from such environments you know what happened if you do not run and you stay longer than necessary you become like them it is said if you cannot beat them join them mm. so you have got to stand out and let them follow you but if you find out that you are not able to conquer them you need to give away run away from such groups it doesn't mean that you have to quarrels do not burn bridges you can amicably in a soft way severe the relationship you can say oh, i am getting so busy this time around i may not be able to you know have time to see you all the time but in such a very soft way not to burn the bridges because you never know what help that person can render to you no. what referral that person can give to you okay what environment are you being nurtured what do you get in sometimes we're in a negative environment where nobody believes in us everything around us is negative you don't take it yes that's the environment you find yourself find a way to get out of such environments find a way to get out of such environments either you relocate if you are in a, or you keep out of those group or those environments and sometimes that's why you find some people are indoor they stay indoor all day not because they want to but because the environment is not right mm -hmm. so staying in such environments would keep you from becoming your best versions and whatever you in whatever you focus and give attention to is what you become that's so true that is so true and, yeah. and I, I totally agree as you start growing and getting away from the the things that are not beneficial or or edifying your life or living your purpose um you're going to start gravitating and and people are going to start coming around that are like-minded like you like like That's exactly it. our That's relationship it. yeah 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 it's because so once you start you know you know you know start improving yourself once you start getting into a network of people of like minds you start you know attracting people of like minds people who are like you you understand and you start keeping away from such and you start being you know those around you who are not like you will start giving way to say oh she's always very busy she's always doing this she's always in the training not because you want to be in the training but because you are looking forward to a personal development you're giving yourself to time in building yourself because we've all been called out to build ourselves we've all been given a talent and a skill by god there's something in us that makes us different i am different from stephanie and stephanie is different from me there's something you do better than i do and there's something i would do better than you do and so sometimes we have different strengths and so we are meant to leverage and celebrate our differences yes. so that we can become who god has called us to be because a lot of times i see people be look, become like this person oftentimes you don't know who the person truly is you are only seeing such you're only seeing from the surface you don't know who the person is in the inner room so sometimes I tell people, don't say you want to become like them. Oh, right. you can tell them, I say, God, I want to be, I want, like John Maxwell, I tell myself, I say that, and if I see Papa John, I'll tell him. I said, I want to be greater than Papa Joy. <laughs> I, I, I told my kids, I'm going to look for his picture, I'm going to print it and put it beside <laughs> my vision board and say, I'm going to be greater than you. I'm going to be speaking it. I may not get to his level. I may get to the same power with him. But because I see myself doing it, you know, the motivation, the energy, the power, everything comes in. Because I see it and I speak it, I declare it, I say it. You become what you say all the time. And right. so that's why we watch what we say. We watch the people we right. hang around. We watch right. what we allow to get into our hearts. Because it's what you get into that you exhibit. Yeah. And, you know, life is about living from inside out, not what you see outside in. Because yeah. there's a lot of distraction. Yes, exactly. The story, and yeah. I want us one or two minutes break so that I can, you know, show my book why okay. I keep us from becoming our best version. Okay. Have you got a copy of this book? Can anything hold you back? Subtitle: Making a difference. 
you need to go get it now. We are called not to fit into the pattern of the world, but to stand out. These can only be achieved by being self-aware. This book is available now on Amazon.com and Jumaya.com as an ebook as well as a print book. It is also available for purchase on www.sandrauco.com. Welcome back. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Oh, welcome oh, back. I love, I love your book. Uh, the the trailer of it is it's very encouraging. I can't wait yes, to get my actually, copy. Yeah, we actually called out to stand out and not to fit in, and that's exactly. why I said it. Exactly. But yes, we can. Everything around us might be speaking negative. But it is not core. It is not a time for us to be like them. It's exactly. a time for us to stand out. Yes, sometimes it might be difficult to make such decision once everything around you is negative. But I want to encourage you for us to stand out. Yes. You've got to be able to do what you are called to do. Right. You know, you have to leverage on your strengths and not your mistakes. We all have times where we're not good in some things. But you don't celebrate those things. You celebrate your best version. You celebrate the things you're doing right so that you can get and become who God has called you to be. It's in those little celebrations you get to, you know, discover yourself. I also want to find out from you, how did you manage, you know, after schooling, being um, working for federal government for 30 years? Did you grow your business alongside? Was it after you retired, you got into your business of personal development and, and growth? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, interesting, you know, before I actually uh, started working for the government, I think throughout my whole life career in the government, I was always searching for something to do, you know, like an entrepreneur, start my own business. And when at the point where it was like more than half of my life, I was already in the government, I figured, you know what, I better stay in. <laughs> and then let's do this on the side. So during the whole time, I was able to gain um uh let's see personal development courses i, I signed up for coaching uh, courses i also signed up for writing how to write i i was able to write uh, or participate in two collaborative books women's um let's see what is it called i don't even know what it's called here oh um voices of the 21st century in this book, so 50 women around the world uh, was part of this book and this one as well. So two, two um, um, books. Right, yeah, books. <laughs> anyway, um, and then during the the course of my years, as I before before I started getting to that retirement age, um, I decided to join Toastmasters because I knew while I was working with teams, one of my um, one of my um, challenges was speaking in front of people. I was deathly afraid of standing in front of people and, uh, you know, kind of trying to communicate. I would just not even get the words out. Uh, I would be stuttering and I'm like, what am I going to say? Wasn't prepared. Um, and so I think that was one of the things I realized that I needed help. So I joined the Toastmasters Club. And it was a safe environment that I was able to, to be heard and to have the grace to have good feedback. It was a pathway to learn how to speak well and clearly. And, and it just gave me more confidence. So that is one area that I'd like to recommend, Sandra, because you are a Toastmaster as yeah. well, right? Isn't yeah. that cool? That's so yeah. cool. That is so cool. I just find it so interesting that, you know, as we 
go on our journey, we 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 end up finding more things that we are in common when people we, that we meet. Anyway, Toastmasters, that's my recommendation. Join a Toastmasters club near you, or if not, you can join virtually because now since COVID, a lot of people have been joining around the yes, world. You know, and voucher. Yeah, so it's awesome. And then um, and then John Maxwell team, again, um, I reached out and I started my business, my coaching business, got my coaching, and um, then I wanted to create, um, oddly enough, I wanted to be able to share my my life with others and my experiences and that's by speaking um i'm definitely afraid of it still but i'm working on it but thank you sure. sandra for, <laughs> for, support, for supporting me and um and and you know bringing this platform to life for me um because you're doing an awesome job just let me tell you it is an awesome awesome Thank you. You have so much courage. I just admire you. You inspire me uh, with your energy and just, you know, go get them at <laughs> It's just a That's great. You're like the energizer, energizer buddy, bunny. But, um, okay, so then, yeah, learning, getting, joining clubs and organizations that are structured to help you get to, from here to there and even if you don't know where you're going at least if you're moving to to do to learn something to improve yourself it's better than staying still and not doing anything you know so that's what i really really encourage yeah everyone <laughs> out there just do it even though you're i'm talking to you introverts and i'm talking to you shy people um, just go out there and do it and get, you know, hook up with uh, Sandra out there and uh, she will definitely you. Definitely <laughs> too. Looking at me too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I love what you just said now. You know, get good Maxwell. You said, there is no leader that speak, spoke, um, there's no leader who did whatever he or she did the first time being a perfect person. You started being bad the first time. But as time goes on, you become better. And it is said that, it said, why, why, whilst trying to look at the weather and, you know, looking for a good weather, you will never do anything because the weather will never be conducive. It will never be right. But he right. said, get, he said, get into the stream. You get good while, whilst trying to become good. If you do not right. jump in, you would be so scared and you would yeah. never take a move. So You're what right. I'm doing today, I never learned it anywhere. I only got a mentor to help me work this route. And he was there for a few weeks and I had to learn all I need to. There was a particular day, he didn't turn up for the show. I have no choice and I was like, God, I have my guests ready to be on, to be interviewed. And my colleague was not there. I got courage from my husband who said, would you leave your life for this guy if he doesn't show up? So move on. It's your thing. You invited him to support you. And that's because I wasn't that strong to do it. But, mm -hmm. you know, we get good whilst doing it. We get good whilst yeah. doing anything we're doing. And you know what he spoke the last time? He said the compounding effects. He said, once you keep doing yeah. things, the first thing, it might not be too good. The second time you improve, the third time you improve, then all the compounding effects makes you stand out. So, yeah. and that encouraged me. That I'm sure the first video I did, say it uh, nine months ago or ten months ago, was not as good as this one. But I'm not challenged because I know that I would only get to improve. The sky right. is a starting point. So if we look right. at what is around us and the people around us, you're not getting support. Just try. Like Martin Luther rightly said, he said, if you can crawl, mm -hmm. keep crawling. If yeah. you can work, keep working. If you can run, then run. If you can fly, say keep flying. He said, but, but by all means, keep doing something. Keep moving. Do not be stagnant. Do something. Whilst trying to becoming the best version of yourself, whilst trying to be, you know, to, you know, exposing yourself to other learning, personal development, growth, being intentional, you get good. You meet and along that path while discovering yourself, while trying to open yourself, you become passionate about you. You find your passion. 
you find your purpose. Yeah. What you don't try, you don't get to know. But what you try, you make mistakes and mistakes. And like Papa John uh, uh, often say, he says, he says, failure keeps you humble. Mm. But success is not a final destination. He yeah. said, but ensure and make sure you keep failure together for they yeah. keep your resilience. They I keep you that. going on even when, you know, you can see all the challenges, you can see all the obstacles. It keeps you going. So you must hold on to something, knowing that, oh, I know this is not working, but I know in the future I will get better. Let's yeah. hold on to that thing we're called to do, a passion. Let's keep at it. Only a matter of time we will get good at what we do. And that's why I said nobody ever did anything for the first time good. Yeah. But as time right. goes, they improved. I'm yeah. sure the first time you did uh, like a training, I'm yeah. sure the first time wasn't that, perf that perfect. No. But <laughs> as you keep going on, you become good. Yeah. And more comfortable. You're right. Yes. It's more and, yes. and you know the thing I like to keep up in mind in my mind too is a lot of times the comparison is you know that comparison attitude is gonna get creeps up and in, in the back of my head thinking, Oh my gosh, what am I doing here? Um, she's so much better than I am. You know, what do I have to say that's important when she has way more important thing to say? What am I doing here? You know, all that comparison and why, you know, I'm not We good must enough. deal with those thoughts. Right? But yeah, God created them. us. God created each one of us. Differently. Unique. Yeah, different and unique. And we all have our own unique message to share yes. with the world. And that yes. is so beautiful right so there is really no need to be jealous or envious of no. anyone we no. all have our path and our journey to run we right. are on a marathon race we never nobody ever knows when we will get to the end that's only crazy. when you know so that should encourage you to know that we all have our parts to play we all, all have our unique message let's hold on to the message we have been given and run with it and we will surely get and make a difference in our world. And that's what we're trying to do. No one was born perfect. We are only striving to be one. We are only striving to be one. I want to find out from you, how did you manage with your relationships? Because you know what? Uh, I tell people, I say relationships are the ships we ride on to destiny. If you have a wrong relationship, they can either make you or mar you. Mm -hmm. So your relationship is key. How have you managed in these so many years of being in the federal government before you got into, before you got married? How did you manage all the relationships till now? Uh-huh. Okay. So interesting. Oh, sorry. Something fell down. Um, relationships. I, you know, the beauty, the beauty of relationships, I think, is when people, individuals know their value that they have they know who they are the value they have and why it matters it's when they have when they know that they are able and better to relate to others hmm. um, so i think even more so um i think more so it's who you are and the value you have if you know that and you you're solid with that and you know god made you for purpose um on purpose um to be blessed and a blessing to others if you know that and you're solid with that then you know why it matters to others because your relationship with others can only add value to others and it's not like hard i mean it's not something that's challenging it's it's just like water flowing down a stream it's constantly feeding the branches or the trees on the side of the, the the river um so that's the visual i'm showing is when you know your purpose and you're flowing nicely down the river um everything that is around everybody's gravitating to the river to go and drink water or to to grow and so i think that's the value of knowing Again, who you are and the value you have and why it matters to others. It brings the relationships in so much more harmony. And 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 honoring 
the differences other people have and don't expect them to be like you. Cause that's what I, I learned is I thought, especially with my husband is like, Oh, why can't you just be like me? Why can't you just think like me? <laughs> but, um, and, and I think a lot of times with our close relationships, that's what we come up with. That's what we expect, right? We expect, Whoa, why can't you just think like me? And, and we can just get along way better than that, than this, you know, but no, it's not, it, we're not supposed to be like each Enough. other. We're all unique and we all have good traits and we have um, different traits that complement each other. Uh, sure. So my husband, he loves to fix things. He's a fixer and I'm not, um, you know, it's, it's, just, it's just a wonderful balance. Again, sometimes I don't appreciate it. <laughs> but I think, you know, we all have to appreciate our differences and be okay with it and not put other people down. Yeah. So that's all I have to share about that. <laughs> yeah, sure. That's okay. I love what you said, knowing your value. If you don't know yourself, then you can't have value to yourself. Yeah. And you can't have yeah. value. We are a people of value because we know ourselves. Because And that's the first thing everyone needs to discover. And for the teenagers and the people coming behind, a lot of people do not know themselves. And if you do not know yourself, there is no way you will value yourself. You will look down, down trodden on yourself. Please, yeah. I think this is a point and a place where you got to know who you are. Knowing your value. Once you know your value, people will not trample on you. Once you know your value, you will want to have value for yourself. Once you know your value, you will want to add value to others around you. And as he said, he said, we get better by relating to others. He said, we were made for a purpose and on purpose. So we have a mission. God has given us a mission and a vision. A vision is where we are going, a goal and a set point. But the mission is the step by step. What's your mission? How would you get there? So the moment we discover our purpose, then life is more meaningful. Then you are able to say, oh, I am this. I want to impact my world. But once you don't see value in yourself, you will never see value in your neighbors. Yep. You will think they're better off than you. Right. And that mindset of comparison, we need to take it off. He said, there's a saying that those that compare themselves to themselves are fools. Mm -hmm. That's what the, what the Bible said. And so we expected not to compare ourselves. We all have our unique calling. We all have our unique, unique race. We are all being, being called for a certain time like this. Once we're able to discover ourselves, knowing what we have been set apart to do, we are more focused and we're yeah. able to make impacts. So I want to appreciate all this because I had to take them, take jottings of them, so I'll be able to come back with, come back to you on that, and you know, and so, but so that uh, our audience too, those joining, you know, later on could at least get something and nibble on something, have something to grab for this session. I also want to find out from you when you moment. One of the reasons I'm asking this questions because I find out that a lot of times people, when they go through tough times, they want to end it all. They can't stay in and like, oh my God, this is killing. And the next thing they want to do is to end their life from suicide. Mm -hmm. Because they say, oh, I'm depressed and things are not working. And the next moment, they want to commit suicide. Mm -hmm. I want to find out why people do this and how have you gone through difficult moments? Mm. Yeah, that's a tough one. Um you know, living here on earth, um, yeah, God said it wasn't going to be an easy, I mean, we all, we all are called again to, to a purpose. And again, he created us for, on a purpose, on purpose for a purpose. Um, and, and it's, you know, it's not easy. I think when we feel like we're the only one going through a difficult time um it, it feels like you know i've been through a lot of rough times where i feel like oh, why am why me um am i the only one going through this um, <laughs> you know you 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 think about it it's like especially if you're alone and you yeah. don't have a community of people that are around you and that's why i think you, Sandra, you and I really truly believe on surrounding ourselves with 
a community of um, like-minded people. Like I have a women's Bible study that I am part of, um, you know, ministry. If you serve in church, even if you have, a, if you don't go to church right now, you know, get plugged into a, a supportive community of believers, um, you know, uh, I think even Toastmasters or even John Maxwell team, you know, even if it's an organization that is supportive, I think that's the key to get you out of any situation, not to get you out of any situation, to help you through a situation that is yeah. depressive, depressing or, um, and, and again, you know, I've been through, there's so many, I can't even think of many, any in particular, but there were so many times when I felt like, uh, alone. I felt defeated. I felt, um, why me? Um, am I going through the only, am I the only one going through this? But I, it was amazing that how God brings certain people in, in my life. He brought certain people in my life at just the right moment where it encouraged me. And, and that person might have not even known I was going through something really, really horrible, but just them crossing my path allowed me to get out of it, to see things beyond my own pain. And I think that's the, that's the beauty of it is when you see beyond your own pain, the bigger vision of how, you know, other people, if you concentrate on helping other people or, or, or seeing where other people's needs need to be met, um, it kind of takes the pain off of you, um, because I think we're inherent. I know God designed us inherently designed us by helping others, and when we help others, it's actually helping us. Yes. So, yeah. So I remember going on a mission trip with our church, and I thought I was gonna. It was in. It was in the Philippines, and I thought, okay, I'm here. I'm going to help these people in the Philippines, um, you know, on this mission trip. And and they're going to be so blessed because I'm there to help them. But no, it wasn't all about that. It was actually a trip to help me and what I was going through. And, and God is so amazing on how he he allows us to go through these journeys. Yeah. And, yeah, it's thinking that, um, thinking that we're we're helping others but then again it's helping us so, so i don't know <laughs> if i'm making sense am i making sense yes, I do. Yes. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah true yeah, when we go through a driver situation it's only it's just a training ground for all those coming behind us and because god wants us, us to be a mouth and a spokesperson for him so sometimes we we'll go through these things so that we can be there to encourage others and yes. if somebody comes to you and say oh this is what i'm going through and you are able to smile back and say oh i was i went through that journey yeah. and this is what i did to go through it this That's is what i did to overcome this is what is making me you know tick so sometimes when we we'll go through that situation we should learn what that situation is and begin to look at the you know the bigger picture of where god is taking you to or why you are going to either because god is preparing you for a ministry or is calling you for a particular set of people to help them so when we go through diverse situation i want to and a lot of times one of the reasons why people want to end it all is because they're empty they, do, they are not mm -hmm. plugged into a group of believers. They are not right. plugged into right. people they can. And they, you know, they do not have any resource or anyone or any right environments around them. And so right. once you are right. empty, you are, there is this void in your heart that is, that is empty. Once you go through challenges, the next thing the devil wants to put in there is, why not end it? Mm -hmm. But I want to encourage you, if you are in that state right now, yeah. you can reach out to Stephanie or myself, Sandra. We can help you to come true. But I also want to let you know you need the Savior. You need Jesus to come into your heart. Once your heart is filled with him, you are focused and you know what you want. When those problems, those things come biting at you, rushing at you, you are able to turn to God to meet him. Because I know this, that it is because the, there is a void that needs to be filled. And that's why you find that a lot of people go into smoking. They go into drugs. They go into diverse things because there's that void that needs to be filled. So I want to encourage you, plug into the right community. Either a community of church, 
a community of, you know, like minds, people who are doing great things, they will help you come out from those bad states or depressed states. And do not see it as the end of life. God is not a wicked father. Neither are you a wicked parent to your children. Sometimes we go through those things because it's a learning curve for us. There's something God wants us to learn. And likewise, you know what it is when you're in school, you're in a particular grade. If you don't pass that grade, you will not be promoted to the next level. So sometimes when we go through challenges, God is preparing us for the next level. So let's get yeah. tuned and ready. You know, whilst yeah. we go through our journey, ask God, what is it that you want me to learn? Let's learn all that God has put in there for us. Once we learn it, we're able to move to the next level. And we're able to, you know, stand out there to be a blessing to others. You know, know why you were called. Uh, we, we were created for purpose on purpose to be a blessed, to be blessed and to be a blessing. Yes. So you want to discover who God has called you to do, uh, uh, who God has called you to be. What are you doing right now? It is not too late to discover yourself. Like I often use this story, the KFC man. Mm. I was he tried, he tried severally. He failed, but he kept on trying. And if you remember to Isaac, he was said he dug a well. He dug the first one, he dug the second one, he dug the third one. He was being taken from him. So sometimes you might have to try a, a new endeavor several times before you break through. Please do not give up. Just yeah. keep doing it. Whilst doing it, I already told you, you have a compounding effect. You get good at the second time. You get good at the third time. And as you keep doing it, you become a champion. You become a light. You become a testimony. Everyone wants to hang around you. And it is likely said, people are attracted to leaders who are making a difference in their world. If you're not making a difference, people keep away from you. I also want to ask you, how did you celebrate when you have good moments? Because one of the reasons I'm asking all these questions, I want people to understand that once mm. you have little successes, you yeah. need to celebrate them. As they keep yeah. you going, they motivate yeah. you. So right. life was never promised to be a bed of roses. Whilst right. going through your tough times, sometimes great moments come. What do you right. do when these great moments come? Do you just shove them or do you oh. celebrate? Oh my goodness, Sandra, I'm glad you asked the question because <laughs> you're talking to someone that just loves celebrating. I mean, <laughs> if I could celebrate and not work, uh, or, you know, like plan, you know, the thing is, I don't like planning, but um, I do it because I know I'm going to celebrate. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I do everything because I know I'm going to celebrate after uh, it's done. So, yeah, you're talking to the person that loves celebrating. And if I could just celebrate all the time, yeah, that's me. Just call me. I hope you celebrate. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's, no, it's very, a good one. Yeah, it's very important. I I really I truly believe, um, it's very important. I I worked with uh, another woman. We collaborated. We did a workshop together. And it's funny. She's a workaholic. She loves. She's very busy. She works. You know, um, tirelessly. She loves doing projects, and she has a hard time celebrating. Um, but she's learning. She's learning. And um, I'm so honored to be uh, to know her or to me have met her because I'm, the, you know, helping her. OK, are you celebrating? You know, I'm, I'm the one that she's accountable to. OK, so what are you doing today to celebrate? You know, um, so, yeah, I'm all about celebration. And even even if it's not you don't even have to spend money to celebrate. Y you know, my celebration is going out in the yard Uh and watering the grass. I mean, you know that. <laughs> or I know oh, it seems dude. odd, right? I mean, you know, it's just being out there, barefooted on the grass, walking in the grass, and just playing with the dogs, um, playing with my grandkids. I mean, that's celebrating, and I think it's mindful celebration that's the key. It's being yes. mindful. It, and it is also said, right? Are you yeah, yeah, it's being mindful and being mindful. grateful. Awesome. Mindful awesome. And, and grateful. Yes. Yeah. Yes, awesome. And it is said, those who are grateful goes higher in life. He said your gratitude determines how far you're going in life. He determines your altitude. So it is often good to celebrate. Whilst celebrating, 
God is also happy with you. Sometimes, you know, what I want from God has not come to manifestation. I yeah. celebrate it. And I say, God, I thank you. Because yeah. I know you've done this in time past and you're still doing it. And you will still do this one. And surely God, you know, even you, I'm sure if I celebrate and, you know, you know, psych you and say, oh, Stephanie, you're doing so great. You're so beautiful. You're so accomplished. Your head will swell. Same mm -hmm. way you will come to God. And tell God, I thank you, Lord, for the things you've done and time past, what you're doing right now and what you're going to do tomorrow. I don't know what tomorrow holds. God is also excited. Yeah. Oh, my God. My daughter is thanking me. I'm feeling good. And guess what? What you're thanking God for comes true easily. So let's learn to be thankful. And yeah. I want to use yeah. this, you know, for those who are depressed, look at the great things God has done in your life yeah. and be thankful. Yeah. And before you know it, you will snap out of being depressed. You will snap out of being, you know, negative or being downcasted. You will snap out to becoming your best version. I want to encourage you, our viewers that have been online with us. I want to thank you for being on this show. And perhaps you have something you want to say to the audience. One last word that you want to leave. Do you have anything? Live your life big and get hooked up with positive People, people <laughs> that will yeah, inspire thank you. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank you for honoring our invitation. I also want to thank our viewers who have been online. And the reason why we're here, if we do not have you, we probably will not be on this show. Thank you for staying tuned with us. And if this is your first time of being on this show, please kindly like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and please share. If this has been a blessing to you, share with all your friends and invite them. Tell them we're doing something great. And if there's something we're doing that's not right and you want us to improve or some questions you want us to be able to discuss, you can throw, you know, shoot us a mail by sending to info at deepinsightword.com or you leave a comment at the comment section. And if you want to reach out to Stephanie Kawasaki, you can shoot me a mail or ask me. I'm sure she's going to leave some of our details, your contact details on the comment section. You might want to leave your your Instagram, your Facebook page in case people want to reach out to you. But feel free if you want to reach out to Stephanie and you can reach her, you can often reach out to me. I'll be able to connect you to her. Thank you. Have a blessed evening. Bye. Until our Thank next you. episode. You have a blessed Thank evening. You. Bye.